things we don't see. Now, this is not a riddle or a trivia or something, but this is the title of a presentation at the first EIU, Eastern Illinois University uh, Technology and Science Symposium. And uh, the uh, theme of the symposium is revolutions in science and technology paradigms. Talk about seeing. Now, if it's seeing is a paradigm, quote unquote, today's presentation is how do we see, quote unquote, things that we don't see. Now, uh, I couldn't find a better person to present this uh, uh, presentation and to answer this question for us other than our colleagues, Vitlana Mitrovsky. And uh, I'm really eager to know the answer to that question, and I'm sure you too. So with much, uh, without much ado, here she is, Vitlana. Hello. So I will start this uh, talk with a question, because there's a question in the title here. Um, and the question is how we see things. So if I were to ask you how, how you or anybody, right, any one of us sees things, what really needs to happen for us to see something? What happens? Well, we need microscopes for one. And then, and then once we get the microscopes, it's just a guessing game from there. Like, okay. the, the, is it the Heisenberg uncertainty principle? Uh -huh. Like, that just defines quantum mechanics, does it not? Yes. I mean, not defines it, but it's like the starting off point. Like, that, that's yeah. whatever I think of whenever I think of like quirks and like stuff you can't see inside of the atoms. Right. Right. Good. Okay. So, that's exactly where I wanted to go. Um, so, um, I just uh, put this under some sort of a subtitle. Uh, under science and technology of fuel cells because really, um, you know, many devices among these fuel cells as well have their durability and, and, and some of them are just not uh, commercially available yet because they're either too expensive or... Precious materials or radioactive materials. Or they fail, you know. And, um, and what these graphs here show is just how, um, over time, how the voltage for fuel cell, for example, drops, you know. And, and um, you can see that, like, over hours, you know, there's a gradual drop in voltage, and, you know, they're going to fail at some point, right? Although, theoretically, they should be working for as long as they're fed with fuel. But they don't, right? It's, something happens. And, and they begin to fail. Well, it's, um, hold on. Is it fission? Fission or fissure? Yeah? No? Or is it radioactive decay? No, it's not radioactive. There's nothing radioactive there. Oh, okay. What? Well, all atom, all, aren't like all atoms radioactive? Like, somewhat? It'll just take millions and millions well, of years? Well, see, that's the thing, right? If you want to see an atom, how are you going to see it? You what, can't. <laughs> you like, can. I mean, you can, I mean, but like. Okay, so so here's the thing. Here's a a, a piece of a, an image. Okay, it's an image of a catalyst um, that operates in a fuel cell, and the the image on the left shows the catalyst before operation, and the image on the right shows the catalyst after operation. Now, without even knowing what's on these pictures, what's depicted here, okay, you can tell that there's a difference, right? You can tell that there's like black spheres here that are smaller. You can tell that there's more of them. You can tell that there's black spheres on the other side as well, that there's fewer of them and that they're bigger. And denser. Well, these spheres are- Are they, are they the same density? Well, you can't really tell. Mm -hmm. So these spheres are actually platinum particles that are um, deposited onto a carbon support of high surface area. And what happens at this scale is that these particles become bigger over time. So um, now if you look at the scale bar here, right, that scale bar says what? Two nanometers. Two nanometers, okay. So how small is the atom? 
Nano is one millionth of, or, hold on, one billionth? Mm -hmm. uh, one billionth of a meter. Of a meter, right. So, so let me ask you this. If nano is one billionth of a meter, um, what do I need in order to see something that small? An electron microscope. Why? Because, I don't know if I can really like tell you the why, but like all I know is that they use it. And that uh -huh. it, it takes like rough sketches of what an atom looks like. Yeah. Okay, that's that's exactly where I wanted to go. Okay. I so just don't know like how things. it does that. Ah, okay. Well that that's where we want to go. So here's how we see things, right? You see rays here bumping into into an object, reflecting off of that object, getting into your eye, and then something happens within your eye, some chemistry happens that tells your brain that you see what you see, right? Physically speaking, there is a condition that these rays have to fulfill in order for you to be able to see that particular object. Well, it has to be in the color spectrum of the UV, or UV rays. Uh huh, right? right. And what are these wavelengths of the color spectrum? Wavelength, wavelengths? Yes. Um, I know it goes from like purple to yellow, and purple mm -hmm. is. These are the colors. Purple's the smaller with like more hertz. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. yellow is like the slowest. Okay, so look. Look. So yep. here's what a wavelength red, is, sorry. okay? Yeah. So this is a distance, right, between two crests or two troughs, right? Okay, so for visible light, okay, that distance is somewhere between 400 and 700 nanometers. Yeah. So this distance here is between 400 and 700 nanometers. Is hertz wavelengths divided by time? Hertz is a unit of frequency. And that is, um, well, in a way, wavelength divided by time, or if you wish, that would be um, speed of light, right, divided, uh, wavelength divided by the speed of light. Oh, Meters it's a, second. so they're all the same. No, sorry, speed of light divided by wavelength. Yeah, because they're all the same speed. It's the other Duh. way around. But right. it's just, it's just so, how fast that they move because some of them are shorter. Uh-huh. So, so what does this have to do with what you can't see? This has to do with what you can't see because we'll, we will reflect these lights off of... Um, something like on a glass transparent um, uh -huh. slide on an electric electron microscope and what will happen is to like different types of lights will react with different um, like atoms yeah okay yes I don't I mean <laughs> so so that wave that wave right yep. has to reflect of something it doesn't have to it can be absorbed as well Yes, but for you to see, right, what you see. Yeah, we, say you're looking at an object, right, and you're shining light at that object, that light has to come back to your eye for you to see it. Yeah, and if it, if it uh, absorbs it all, it's just black. Right. You can't see. That's right. So, so imagine this now. So we said this distance here is several hundred nanometers, right? Yep. And you want to see something that's of the order of one nanometer. So we want to see something that's 100 times smaller than this wavelength. Can you see it? No, you can't. So how do they get this image? That's two nanometers. It's like not radio waves, like what's on the other spectrum of radio waves? They must Gamma have rays, used, beta rays, alpha rays. They must have used some other wavelength, what's right? What's the, what's the, is it, 
Not Schrodinger. Who's the guy who just shot alpha beams at a sheet of gold and was like, why is there stuff not... It should either be shooting straight back at me or, like, to the side. But if some of them would go straight through. So look, so at this picture here, you can see um, what are the sizes of different waves. What are the things that you can see with these types of waves? So here's the wavelengths, right? So starting from a kilometer all the way down to a picometer. Okay. Oh, I, I so, miss <laughs> I miss physics and all the exponents. <laughs> okay, so so if I want to see something that's of the order of a nanometer, that's here, right? I must use soft X-rays, right? My visible. Are X-rays gamma rays? No, that's what different, are, right? Are gamma we? is gamma, X is X. So my visible, what we see, mm -hmm. is right there. Yeah, so it's a couple of hundred of nanometers, right? So that's what you can see. But if you want to see something that's here, then you've got to use X-rays. Now let me ask you a question. Would you want me to shoot x-rays at you? If I had a lead vest. Mm -hmm. So you don't, right? I mean, what if I want to see a cell, a cell membrane that's like 10 nanometers? I mean, if and you, I said, well, I'm going to use if you cut off, If you cut off a little bit of my skin and then put it and on the head, put it on. I'm not, well, other than that, you're no, shoot, right? You're not shooting radioactive Good. stuff at me. Right. So in other words, if I want to see something small, I need to use very energetic rays. These very energetic waves, waves are going to kill what I want to see. They're going to destroy what I want to see. Oh. So I can't see it, right? Um, well, you know, it can, right? It definitely can. So in other words, the smaller I want to go and see, the bigger and bigger energy I need to use. The more energy I use, the more damaging that is going to be to what I'm trying to look at. Yeah. That makes sense, right? Yeah. OK, sure. so that means microscopes, optical, the way we were talking about wave, reflect a wave, see a wave, Mm -hmm. is not what you can always use. Because you have to use electricity, or not electricity, you, just you gotta light use waves. something very, with a lot of energy, right? High frequency. So if I wanted to see an atom, then I have to disrupt it with too much energy, and I'm gonna disrupt it so much, so I'm not gonna be able to see it, because yeah. it's not gonna sit there. So, so here's the physics. So this is where it gets into theoretical. It's theoretical, but by this time we've already like got it down to where we know like the basic, um, no, because I mean, we never know where the electrons are in atom. However, Good. we know what, That's right. we know like most of the isotopes mm -hmm. for like a lot of things. We know the radioactive ones, we know um, I don't know, the stable isotopes and like which isotopes are I don't know, reactive, more reactive than others. So look, there is a technique by which you can see things that you can't see. Mm -hmm. Now we'll get to the answer to the question. Yeah. So what we can do is use some physics here and say, okay, we're going to forget about waves. We're not going to use any optics, any lenses. Use a piece anything. of paper and a pencil. What we can do is we can make a very, very sharp tip. And the technology now is able to do things, to make uh, tips that are really, really very sharp, mm -hmm. almost like down to an atom at the apex.
Especially with uh, diamonds. Yeah, diamonds, metals as well. So now what we can do is bring that tip close to the object that we want to look at. And see how it reacts with the, I, the um, what's laying underneath it. Mm -hmm. Because depending on the polarity of that atom and it's like, react, like how it's able to react, you're going to be able to identify uh -huh. it and um, like you could identify it like the element and you could identify you the can't. electron. I mean you can't. You well, can't identify it but what you can do is measure something that is very easily measurable. Like radio, not radio. Well I guess you, you could. You can let current flow between that tip and your sample if your sample is conductive. The current will always flow through the atom that's closest to the sample. Okay. okay. The size of that current is going to depend directly on how close that tip is to the sample. So, by measuring the current, and because the current depends on the distance of the tip from the sample, you can get a topography image of that sample and really on the size limit of the size of the tip, right? You yep. can see that, right? The smaller this tip is, the smaller features you can see, right? So what you see doesn't depend on the wavelength of light anymore, but right. it depends on how well you can fabricate this tip and how sharp it can be. But you're still using electricity though. Sure. Which is but waves. Adams That's like, waves, isn't it? It is, it is, but atoms like like electricity, right? I mean, electrons I mean, not, are part of atoms, right? Not all, like, or not all atoms. So, these currents are really small. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah. really, really small. If you it, have... It's, it's almost difficult to measure them. That's a bigger problem than actually there's having a current. So, so one th way is through passing current. Another way is... We don't have to pass current. What we can do is, because when putting things together, and when they get close enough, attractive forces start playing in between the two objects. It's just water. You can do this like right now with your fingers. Pretty much. Water, in and then take two drops and just do that. Uh -huh. and like yeah. Because water is a polar mo molecule, so it sticks to one another. Right. Good. So, when they get close enough, they're going to attract each other. And then when they get too close, they start repelling each other. So, whoop. Something like this. Right? So, if, if this tip deflects, and it does mm -hmm. when it gets close enough to the surface, depending on how strong these forces are, the tip is going to deflect to a different extent. So, here's a situation where I don't have to pass current. All I have to do is be able to control that distance in a way that I can put the tip close to the surface and then measure the deflection of that tip. Now, what do I measure? I actually measure, again, current. So here's a tip. Here's a laser shining on the tip. The tip is moving across a surface. And as long as the surface is 
perfectly smooth, the tip will stay at one distance, right? Mm -hmm. But at the point when there is some bump on the surface, the tip will deflect. That deflection will be registered because this laser beam that's reflected off of the cantilever here. It will have a different frequency. Yeah, well, God, it's shining it's very, on this very solar diode different. and there's going to be some current. And that current is going to depend really on how much that dip deflects. So, so by, so you actually get to a point where you get a microscope, right? That's not really using optics, right? There's no lenses. There's nothing, no energy it's just waves. Just waves. But yes, you are measuring waves, and you are measuring something that's really, really easy to measure at that current. And that's easy to measure. The easiest thing to measure. So, so, so here's a picture. Finally, we get to an electron microscope. Here's a picture. There is no electron microscope. That's, this, not, that's, that's the wave. That's right. the atomic force microscope. That's the one with the tip. OK, what? How, does that have how many nanometers are on there? So I was going to say, no, you can't, really. It's like, you, you'll have to trust me here um, that this is uh, two micrometers. Two micros. So that's, and that these colors that's going. That's a million. Or uh, two, two, million. two thousand nanometers. Two thousand nanometers okay. in width, but what matters is this height, right? The height going from black to white, yeah. okay, it's about twenty nanometers. So all this so color, right, is not real color. We can dye it any way we want. Yeah, but and we just dye it to give it value. Right. So the black is a zero. The orange is somewhere between 0 and 20, and like the white is 20 nanometers. So these bumps here that you see, and you can see them pretty well, right? Uh, they're somewhere between 0 and 20 nanometers, right? High. Like tall. Tall? Tall. If that's 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you'll have to trust me because this is on a microscope that um, that um, an image that I obtained and the software um, gives you, uh, you might be very able to see it. tiny, <laughs> might very be able to... tiny numbers here. But you can't even see it on there. Either. No, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's in micrometers and it's from zero to two micrometers, and then this goes from like zero to twenty-ish nanometers. Okay. So. Um, and that's something we got here, right, here at, at Eastern. Yeah. But um, you can see um, people have been able to get really pictures of atoms. Oh, I've seen beautiful pictures. And yeah. I'm just like, well, it's, I mean, they doctor it, but they just, like, change the different colors of, like, each different part right, of the atom right, and stuff. Right, and it's right, just right, like, right, that's freaking right. awesome. Yeah. See? It's usually like blue, yellow, green, and like, um, uh -huh. I don't know, just really like bright, vivid colors to like di make the distinction. So you, you can actually Google that easily. Yeah. You can easily get to uh, Google and actually find uh, a picture, not only of an atom, but of an electron. Can you get pictures of like quarks? Not quirks, but like the little that, no. the little empty circles that quirks not that are supposed I, to not be. Not that I know of, but um, but um. Subatomic. So part, let's say. Subatomic. Uh, AFM, AFM atomic force microscope of an atom. Okay. There you go. And what see. So, so there's no optics, right? We're not looking into anything. What we are doing is we are measuring either currents or forces. And then we are mapping these currents and forces over a surface. And you really do get images. Yeah, I mean, is that something or is that? That looks to me that 
looks to me it's like a, a benzene chain. ring. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. carbon chain. Not. That's right. Hydrocarbons. Right. And I don't know, well, so no, this looks to me like graphite or something. Okay, yeah, so just right? carbon together. So they just have like carbons. The thing is, I don't know why they're of different colors. Different isotopes. But arranged like that. It's just not fully completed. Like, out here it's still reactive, but like it's still ready to be able to attach onto some amino acids. Ah? Uh? Yeah. Wait. Oh, oh yes, that might help. Sees chemical bonds in individual <laughs> molecules. See? Yes. <laughs> See? But does it say what it actually is? So carbon-carbon bonds of different length and bond order. Ah. Carbon monoxide. Use um, a functionalized tip. So the, tip, the reason the tips look different is because it's carbon monoxide and the inside are just regular carbon. By the way, now, why would you want to put carbon monoxide on a tip? Because it's extreme, hold on, carbon monoxide, see, oh, I've not done chemistry. In a so minute. if they want to see carbon, it makes sense to put carbon monoxide on the tip, right? Because all the Because uh, they're gonna interact. Because all that's in the end is oxygen. Right. One molecule of oxygen. Right, so so it makes sense, right? Oh, can I do this? Okay, so we have carbon. Carbon is. Is there a periodic table around here? I'm really rusty. Carbon is in the fourth group. Four, so four, two, C. This is four, this is six, if that's what you want to. No, CO is fine. That's carbon dioxide. It's carbon monoxide. That's carbon monoxide. So it's a bond. So you want to make one? a bond? Is it minus one or minus no, two? No, nothing. Plus one. Just a neutral molecule. That's neutral. Right. Is that neutral? Yes. What's well, like the structure? Ah, uh, double bond between the carbons and the oxygens here. Good. You have a double bond. The triple? No. You you could yes. You could have a triple. There's a mix between a double and a triple in carbon monoxide. So you need four. I don't. What isn't this There's carbon so reactive? There's electron pairs. Okay. There's electron pairs on the oxygen on both. Free electron pairs on the oxygen, not on the carbon, on the oxygen. Oh, okay, on the oxygen. There's one free pair. Well, if you draw it like that, then how many electrons must you have around each Eight. atom? Okay, Eight. good. So how many is this? Um, These two four. bonds are four, right? So how many more electron pairs do you need on the oxygen to make it eight? Uh, ten, twelve? No, no, no. You have four. You need eight. Okay. So you're missing how many? Going from four to eight, how four. many do you, four. So it means two electron pairs on the oxygen. Right, good, that's it. Right. Now be able to like out here. Now the carbon doesn't have to have eight electrons. It's quite happy with six. It's not too reactive, but it is. No, it's just small. It, it, can't, it doesn't like too many electrons. Well, the thing is it's not like, it's not super reactive with all the really reactive stuff like fluorine, chlorine, and like all the alcohol. Well, metals. that 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 too, but um, there's one electron pair right there. Yeah. So that's one way of drawing a carbon monoxide. So see these electrons here, they take up a lot of space, and because they take up a lot of space, if you have a tip that's function that that has these molecules right on onto it. These electron pairs like to interact with the surface, okay? So that's why I think they would coat a tip with carbon monoxide so that they're going to better image carbon because of these electron pairs. That's my guess. That blue are those. 
Yes. Yes. Where do you um? Where are you from? Like like. I'm oh. from Edwardsville. I don't have like any college experience at all. I just read Stephen Hawking. Are you going to? Uh, I'm going. Yeah, I'm going to. Like, I can't work. Like, yeah. I can't not go to college. Maybe he. Do over the summer. Over the summer. Um. Right. I mean, like, I used to work for Walmart, and I ref soccer. Why don't you come work for me? Really? Yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. I'm for. I'm free whenever. I'll be an intern. I don't even care. Are we looking at a modern Isaac Newton now or what? <laughs> okay, yeah. but okay. I have one question. How would you define mass? Like this is what my like, high school teacher asked me, and I just yeah. I cannot do it. How would you define mass? Like personally, yeah, that's, that's, personally, because I mean, textbook is just like whatever. It doesn't mean anything because it's like defining itself with itself because yeah, it's, something that has matter and matter is something mm -hmm. that has matter. Like mm -hmm. no. Well, yeah, that's tough, but it's not the same as weight. No, no, mass has nothing to do with weight. Yeah. Weight is just something we created because we have different um, gravitational poles. Right. But um, mass is uh, something different, right? There's matter. What school are you from? Well, I teach here. You teach here? Okay. Because yeah. I didn't know, because like, there were a bunch of teacher, or teachers coming in from other schools today, right? Mm -hmm. That are talking about or doing lectures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So? So, uh, so anyway, so in my group, a couple of students are um, we're, uh, making fuel cells and so on, and we're trying to um, look at why things fail and so on. Have you, like, my, like, uh, we have that microscope. Really? Yes. How expensive was that? 250. Thousand? Thousand. Was that just your one, was that just one year's like expenses? So that was the um, National Science Foundation um, mm -hmm. grant um, oh from the major research so instrumentation awesome. program that I we got. I bet you guys have an awesome um, telescope too here. Te uh, the telescope, yeah, there is a telescope in the physics, yep. Astronomy, ast astrophysics. That's right, yes. So this microscope we share with physics and with geology because okay. we... Um, I mean, because anyone can use it, like even chemistry, physics, biology... It takes time to get trained physics. on it. It takes time. Doesn't, I mean, it, it takes time and it takes patience and it takes... Memorization. Uh, no, not um, memorization. Good hands, a lot of thinking and a lot of time to uh, just pra practice, 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 practice. Because imagine yourself. That's how everything You have to is. take that little tip, right? And you have to mount it on that microscope. I feel like the hardest thing, though, would be just to get the tip to the tip. Right. That's right. So that's where you have to practice. Because once you get the tip, all you have to do, I mean, you have to just shine the laser at it. Right. But I mean, I mean that's going to be hard, but... That, I feel like the tip that is you worse. can do that, yeah, but to get the tips uh, to uh, actually buy them, right? Because they would be the, the the expensive part, right? That's you have to, and you'll you're gonna break a lot of them during learning right. how to use the the instrument. And breaking them, it's just like okay, you touch something and it's gone, right? So um, so that. And then, and then we look at, so once you get your hands in it, then you start looking at what happens to a fuel cell, for example. What happens to an electrode in a fuel cell if, um, well, that's if it operates? Or fu okay, I'm, no. I keep jumping to nuclear fuel cells when no, you say fuel cells. No, that's nothing to do with Do nuclear. you guys do nuclear stuff here? No. Is that not allowed? No, I don't. No, I just mean, is it not like, is it? I don't know. No, I don't think it's not allowed. I just think it, it requires uh, special safety um, safety uh, precautions, but other than that, no. Because I, I was going to go into the Navy nuclear engineering program, but. Don't. But I was just like, okay, 
they they wanted me so bad too because I got a don't 90, go there. I got a ninety two like on the percentile scale, like yeah. they take people in the thirties, and like they were gonna send me. Don't out. go there. I Nobody's know. gonna go nuclear. Later. No, they do. No. No, they do. No. I could have gotten it so easily. Go solar. I'm not. No, no I'm not going through the military what? though, unless it's ROTC, which I might try. Oh, the. The ROTC, what's that? Uh, it's just where like you go to school for four years, and they pay for your school, and you just have to go like once a month to the army thing, and then you um, pay. Um, they pay for your school, and you mm -hmm. just like basically you just work for the government for four mm -hmm. to six years after you're mm -hmm. done, and then you can do whatever you want. You can stay in mm -hmm. because if you want to, because you'd mm -hmm. be doing some cool mm -hmm. stuff. Like they they said I would have probably like four years of schooling, four to six years of schooling, and then mm -hmm. I would go to um, just work. Mm -hmm. I, guess, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, sweet. So, uh, so let me just show you a couple of things. Okay. That um, some of the, uh, actually, let me show you the guy who did most of the work. Oh, this is the fuel cell that we made, huh? Look it's at that. In a way, yeah. What kind of? Um, metal but it did is you a fuel use? cell because we are actually uh, flowing hydrogen. <laughs> <That's> dangerous. <laughs> yeah. So it is a fuel cell, um, and that then we're sort of like powering this wristwatch. I'd be messing with like probably lithium. Is that safer? No, no. This is hydrogen. Is this lithium safer? No. 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 It's just easier to pack. I could probably. So we play with our electrodes. Yeah. We do some modification to them, like mimicking the operation of a fuel cell. Yeah. And then we take these electrodes and then we image them. And so this is just like a, an optical picture. See how fuzzy it is? 250 grand for that. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, that's that's just it. a regular yeah. camera. No. Oh, okay. But then, oh. then. That's cool. Then, uh, then you start looking at these electrodes, and you look at different areas of that electrode, and you can see how different topographies um, you see uh, at different positions. Like if you look here, for example. What's negative voltage? Negative is negative. I know, but like, what is it? So it's with respect to something, right? What's negative temperature? Does that mean there's more res more resistance than flow? No, 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 no. That has nothing to do with resistance. It just has to do with polarity, right? So if this is positive with respect to this, then then that's positive, right? Okay. If this is more positive, then this is negative with respect to that, right? It's just relative, okay? What? So it means electrons flow in one direction if the voltage is positive and they flow in the other direction if the voltage is negative. Okay. All right, that, that, that's the oh. only difference. So it's direction. How, how electrons flow. Velocity. No, no, no. Just how they flow, right? I can have the same voltage from two points, right? I, this could be a zero and this could be a plus one, right? And I can have electrons moving from negative to positive, right? From zero to plus one. If I reverse, they'll go in the other direction. Okay, I was confused. I, w I was thinking for some reason it was more like a uh, regular tile or R. And I was thinking... Multiply. Multiply. Okay, I always get confused. I was, yes. I was thinking that um, if you multiply the negative, not negative, if one this is this this is positive. It's always positive. This mm -hmm. is either positive or negative. It just depends on the direction. Direction. Flow, yeah. That's it. And it really doesn't even matter, does yes. it? Because it's just gonna flow one of two ways. Right, right, right. Or so it matters in these experiments it would matter, right. Can it flow in um, will it flow in a three dimensional like say you have a wiring thing set up? Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is your fuel source, and here's a switch. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think? If you were drawn, say, say you're charged positively, 
-hmm. And there's something that's negatively charged over there. And then there's something that's even more negatively charged over there. And then there's something even more negatively charged over there. Where would you run? Wherever Positive. it's most, most negative, yeah. right? Okay. So, so if we have, uh, if it's flowing this way, would it be flowing that way? It would always flow in the negative. direction of the, with, with this, the biggest difference, right, in the charges or the biggest voltage. That's how it'll always flow. Okay. You know, it's like path of least resistance, you know, like said, I'm going there. I guess what I'm trying to ask is like, it, is it only negative, positive or negative? Or like, is there also something in between? Not that, but like, okay, so if you have a negative, like the quadrants, here's one, uh -huh. two, and that's two, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so is that like I over R? No. So I don't know. I'll figure this out later. I don't even know what I'm like trying to ask. So, anyways, so then, so then there's like different topographies that we look at and we can see on these electrodes and so on and so forth, um, and. Um, and we can make some crystals and then remove them and so on. And Do you the teach people, chemistry as well? Sorry? Do you teach chemistry as well as physics? That, uh, yeah, I teach chemistry actually. I'm in oh. the chemistry department. But but yes, there is a lot of physics in, in here. Well, physics, I mean, they. Yeah. There has to be. Chemistry, right? like you need to know physics to do chemistry, but like you don't need chemistry to do physics. That, well, uh, yeah, depends what kind of physics you want to do. Like practical. Ah, uh, if you go into practical, you'll have to know pretty much everything. Well, just, I mean, it's going to I mean, come on. Uh, if you're if making I didn't know that a, member, a cell membrane was 10 nanometers thick, I'd kill you, right? So, I mean, so if I you're, gotta if know you're making, biology. If you're making a steel bridge, though, I'm saying you don't need to know, like, elements that much besides huh. like a few metals. That's what you, you need think. You know a few metals. That's what you think. You How know? about corrosion? And that's what I'm saying. A few you metals. Uh, All you need to know how to do is make stainless steel which is carbon, iron, and... And a ton and, and hundreds of other elements in there as well. Uh, right. Okay. Right. All right. But like, well, like mostly the time the engineers don't really like mess with that. They just like take... They will buy the... They, will, okay. they just will get the percentage okay. of like carbon and stuff. So, so I got both. Know I, was I was trained as an engineer, yeah. okay? So I have an undergrad in engineering, All right. in chemical engineering. But I did my PhD in chemistry. Oh. So I did both things. Which and I can tell you, you need both <laughs> to be able to do something meaningful. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> you need both. So, and I work with students from physics, from geology, from chemistry, and Science. there's no better experience Once you hit college, though, once you get to college, though, all science is interrelated. That's right. That's right. That's right. There's no way you can say, oh, I know only this and I care only about this. Uh, you know nothing if that's the approach. So if we need to learn physics, we're going to learn physics. If we need to learn chemistry, we'll learn chemistry to do what we need to do, yep. right? So, okay, so Andrew was a geologist, so he made the fuel cell. All right. Kithy was a graduate student. She works at Abbott Labs now. Benny was a, an undergrad who had to move to Texas because of some health insurance things. Ooh. So, but the two of them actually made that fuel cell, and Kelly did all this AFM work on these electrodes. He was the one who did the microscope work? Yes, 
he's the one who did a lot of the, most of the microscope work. Yes, yes. So, so see, and then I also had Patrick, who is a physicist, who is now in material science and engineering at University of Illinois. My friend goes. To and the, then I had I Caitlin, who is also a geologist. And you know, so. So what do you do over the summer? I have nothing. Okay. I don't have anything planned right so now. So why don't you? Um, so why don't we uh, write? I took his card. Okay. No, take take her card also. All right. I All don't right. have. I don't carry cards, unfortunately. And then, and then once we get the microscopes, it's just a guessing game from there. Like, okay. the, the, is it the Heisenberg uncertainty principle? Uh -huh. Like, that just defines quantum mechanics, does it not? Yes. I mean, that defines it, but it's like the starting off point. Like, that, that's yeah. whatever I think of whenever I think of like quirks and like stuff you can't see inside of the atoms. Right, right, good, okay. So that's exactly where I wanted to go. Um, so, um, I just uh, put this under some sort of a subtitle, uh, under Science and Technology of Fuel Cells, because really, um, you know, many devices, among these fuel cells as well, have their durability, and, and, and some of them are just not uh, commercially available yet, because they're either too expensive, or... Precious materials, or radioactive materials. Or they fail. And, um, and what these graphs here show is just how, um, over time, how the voltage for a fuel cell, for example, drops. You know? And, and um, you can see that like, over hours, you know, there's a gradual drop in voltage, and you know, they're going to fail at some point, right? Although, theoretically, they should be working for as long as they're fed with fuel. But they don't, right? It's, something happens, and and they begin to fail. Well, it's um, hold on. Is it fission, fission, or fissure? Yeah. yeah. No. Or This is not a riddle or a trivia or something, but this is the title of a presentation at the first EIU, Eastern Illinois University uh, Technology and Science Symposium. And uh, the uh, theme of the symposium is revolutions in science and technology paradigms. Talk about seeing, now if seeing is a paradigm, quote unquote, today's presentation is how do we see, quote unquote, things that we don't see. Now, um, I couldn't find a better person to present this uh, uh, presentation and to answer this question for us other than our colleagues, Vitlana Mitrovsky. And uh, I'm really eager to know the answer to that question, and I'm sure you too. So with much, uh, without much ado, here she is, Vitlana. Hello. So I will start this uh, talk with a question, because there's a question in the title here. Um, and the question is how we see things. So if I were to ask you how, how you or anybody, right, any one of us sees things, what really needs to happen for us to see something? What happens? Well, we need microscope wavelength, wavelengths. Yes. Um, I know it goes from like purple to yellow, and purple mm -hmm. is... These are the colors. Purple's the smaller, with like more hertz. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah. yellow is like the slowest. Okay, 
So look. Look. So yep. here's what a wavelength right, is, okay? Yeah. So this is a distance, right, between two crests or two troughs, right? Okay, so for visible light, okay, that distance is somewhere between 400 and 700 nanometers. Yeah. So this distance here is between 400 and 700 nanometers. Is Hertz wavelengths divided by time? Hertz is a unit of frequency, and that is, um, well, in a way, wavelength divided by time, or if you wish, that would be um, speed of light, right, divided, uh, wavelength divided by the speed of light. Oh, it's a, so they're all the same. No, sorry, speed of light divided by wavelength. Yeah, because they're all the same speed. It's the other duh. way around. But right. it's just, it's just so, how fast that they move because some of them are shorter. Uh-huh. So, so what does this have to do with what you can't see? This has to do with what you can't see because we'll, we will reflect these lights off of um, something like on a glass Two nanometers. Two nanometers, okay. So how small is nano? Nano is one millionth of, or hold on, one billionth? Mm -hmm. uh, one billionth of a meter. Of a meter, right. So, so let me ask you this. If nano is one billionth of a meter, um, what do I need in order to see something that small? An electron microscope. Why? Because, I don't know if I can really like tell you the why, but like all I know is that they use it. And that uh -huh. it, it takes like rough sketches of what an atom looks like. Yeah. Okay, that's that's exactly where I wanted to go. Okay, I so just don't know like, how things. it does that. Ah, okay. Well, that that's where we want to go. So here's how we see things, right? You see rays here, bumping into into an object, reflecting off of that object, getting into your eye, and then something happens within your eye. Some chemistry happens that tells your brain that you see what you see, right? Oh. Physically speaking, there is a condition that these rays have to fulfill in order for you to be able to see that particular object. Well, it has to be in the color spectrum of the UV, or UV rays. Uh huh, right? right. And what are these wavelengths oh, of the color spectrum? Or is it radioactive decay? No, it's not radioactive. There's nothing radioactive there. Oh, okay. What? Well, all atom, all, aren't like all atoms radioactive? Like. It's somewhat, it'll just take millions and millions well, of years. Well, see, that's the thing, right? If you want to see an atom, okay, how are you going to see it? You now, can't. <laughs> you like, can't. I mean, you can, and but like... Okay, so, so here's the thing. Here's a, a, a piece of a, an image, okay? It's an image of a catalyst um, that operates in a fuel cell. And the, the image on the left shows the catalyst before operation, and the image on the right shows the catalyst after operation. Now, without even knowing what's on these pictures, what's depicted here, okay, you can tell that there's a difference, right? You can tell that there's like black spheres here that are smaller. You can tell that there's more of them. You can tell that there's black spheres on the other side as well, that there's fewer of them and that they're bigger. And denser. Well, these spheres are... Are they, are they the same density? Well, you can't really tell. Mm -hmm. So these spheres are actually platinum particles that are um, deposited onto a carbon support of high surface area. And what happens at this scale is that these particles become bigger over time. So um, now if you look at the scale bar here, right, that scale bar says what? 